This presentation is extracted from a talk I gave at the Hospital for Special Surgery in October 2021, discussing applications of the ESP block beyond the torso. The ESP block was first described for thoracic analgesia, and although its main applications at present still center on thoracic and abdominal analgesia, it's also been described for applications literally from head to toe. And this is based on the fact that there is an erector spinae plane that runs the length of the spine. In this video, we'll be focusing on analgesia of the upper limb. The rather surprising finding that the ESP block could be used for painful conditions of the upper limb was due to the innovation of Mauricio Ferrero, the inventor of the ESP block. He first performed a block at the T2 level to treat chronic degenerative shoulder pain. And the effect was remarkable, as you will see here. It hurts. From 0 to 10, the 0 to 10, how is your pain usually when you are lifting your arm? When they start levantando la... Eight. Eight out of ten. Okay. Try to lift it more, please. Try to levantarlo más. Okay. Okay. Do your movement. Perfect. ¿Cómo está el dolor? Quedando un 5%. Casi nada. Almost zero, right? Yeah. Now, we're still not entirely sure how it works, but we believe there's a component of spread to the cervical nerve roots, as suggested by the contrast distribution on radiological imaging in patients, as shown here. We can see that the erector spinae muscle and the intermuscular planes extend up into the neck and communicate with the planes adjacent to the scalene muscles and the cervical neural foramina. Local anesthetic spread into the shoulder girdle muscles around T1 and T2 may also produce a local effect on nerve endings in the shoulder girdle muscles. I do not, however, consider it a primary replacement for a C5 to 6 root block like an interscalene or superior trunk block in shoulder surgery. These will provide a denser block and much better analgesia, although at the expense of motor block of the upper limb. However, where I and others have found it extremely useful is as a complement to brachial plexus blocks, in particular as a rescue technique for post-operative pain after complex arthroscopic shoulder surgery, especially pain in the chest or axilla. It's also an option for surgeries of the upper limb and shoulder where a brachial plexus block may not be suitable or feasible. Turning back to shoulder surgery, and in particular arthroscopic shoulder surgery, extensive fluid extravasation into the tissues of the chest and shoulder after prolonged and complex surgery is common. And you can see from this ultrasound scan how the pectoral muscles are full of fluid. This can be associated with severe pain over the anterior and posterior shoulder, chest, and into the axilla, despite a working C5-6 root block. A high thoracic T2 or T3 ESP block invariably improves the pain and is easily accomplished as the site of injection is not involved by fluid. I've covered this technique in more detail in another video presentation that's available on YouTube. I also refer you to this recent case report published in Anesthesiology, which illustrates a rather extreme example of this clinical scenario. The patient had extensive air and fluid extravasation in her soft tissues after a three-hour arthroscopic shoulder surgery and complained of chest pain and dyspnea in the PACU. After ruling out the pneumothorax with his chest x-ray, an ESP block was performed, which relieved their symptoms completely. As with other applications for the ESP block, its application in painful conditions of the upper limb is spreading beyond the operating room and pain clinic. This case report from our emergency department colleagues reported an impressive relief of severe upper limb pain radiating from the neck, which was presumed to be neurogenic in nature. As with the case we first reported, a T2 ESP block not only relieved the pain, but preserved the motor function, allowing the patient to regain full unrestricted range of motion in their shoulder and elbow. Finally, I'd like to highlight a very recent and interesting study just published by Guffey and colleagues in St. Louis, Missouri, on their experience with using ESP blocks for postoperative analgesia in patients undergoing decompression for thoracic outlet syndrome. Their standard of care at the time was surgical placement of a perineural catheter alongside the brachial plexus 
and infusion of local anesthetic for three days. Between May 2019 and January 2020, they performed single injection ESP blocks between T2 and T3 in 40 patients as an alternative technique. They matched these to 40 patients who received standard care during the same time, and they found that opioid consumption during post-operative days 0 to 3 was similar, and that post-operative pain scores were also not significantly different, except on the day of surgery. It's fair to say, however, that the analgesia from the single injection ESP block was probably not as good based on the patient rating of in-hospital pain control. However, what was most striking was that the instance of and the severity of prolonged sensory loss in the upper limb was dramatically reduced in the ESP group. And this has led to a change in their practice away from perineural, perineural infusions to ESP blocks. And in my opinion, this is yet another interesting example of the benefit that an indirect block like the ESP block can offer. That is, analgesia that's not perfect, but still good enough. And any shortfall in analgesia is compensated for by the advantages that come with less local anesthetic reaching the target. In this case, less neurotoxicity and persistent deficits. So while it's still early days, there appears to be promising roles for the ESP block in various painful conditions of the upper limb, particularly where conventional brachial plexus blocks are not feasible or are not providing complete analgesia. In addition, because the downsides are so minor, it doesn't take a lot of potential upside to justify performing the ESP block. This is what I call the nothing to lose philosophy, which is sometimes appropriate when we don't have other options. But equally, we need to be careful that we are not denying patients a more effective alternative treatment, which is why at this time, I currently view the ESP block as a second line technique or complementary to the more targeted blocks of the brachial plexus.